Frank Zamboni, who worked on cars and refrigeration with his brothers, introduced the first ice resurfacing machine in 1949. He received a patent in 1953. The Zamboni shaves a thin layer of ice. Meanwhile, jets of water clean the ice. Finally, a towel spreads the warm ice-making water, leaving behind a smooth sheet of ice. When the machine resurfaces the ice, it is capable of removing close to 2,500 pounds of compacted snow, while it can leave behind about 1,500 pounds of water. We celebrate Frank Zamboni's invention. That's why I'm Aaron Sims, and this is Chillin' on a Zamboni. When you're a young kid and you're thinking about playing professional sports, you always think about the players on your home team, probably. And if you're looking at the NHL, you think of players like Sidney Crosby, you think of players currently, you think of Alex Ovechkin, you look at Joe Sackick, Steve Iserman, uh, Mario Lemieux, guys who played their whole careers with one team. Uh, in the case of Sackick and Iserman, uh, they became the general managers of that one team. In the case of Lemieux, he ended up owning the Pittsburgh Penguins. So those guys, for how great they were, uh, they're the rarity. For every one of those, there's 20 guys who play professional sports, professional hockey, who go year to year. Greg Rollo, the Admiral's assistant coach, played on all one-year contracts in his professional hockey career. Nomads are more likely to happen than anybody else in the professional sports world, and we happen to have one today. And here he comes right now. It's Admiral's alternate captain, Tennyson. Hey, Tenny, you good for a ride? I am. Let's do it. Let's go. Earlier this year, you kind of described yourself as a nomad. You moved around a lot as a kid, and now as a pro, how, di is, how difficult is it? Well, I think it was a unique, unique way to grow up, for sure. Uh, like I told you before, I don't really know anything else, so I think, if anything, it set me up nicely for how my career has kind of shaped up. It's given me an opportunity to live in different cities, move around a bit, and adjust to that. So, no bad is definitely a good word, and, uh, you know, I'm happy about that. Was it difficult as a kid when dad comes home and says, hey, I got transferred for my job or I'm going to take this job? Was it difficult? or I'm assuming it gets easier as you go along. Yeah, I mean, the good thing is I was always playing hockey, so I always had friends on those teams uh, in school. So moving from team to team was, or place to place was no big deal. Uh, it was just kind of the norm at that point, but I always had had friends uh, and people to uh, you know show me around the new cities and similar to uh, the pro career, I guess it's been uh, you know different different teammates, different people being able to show me uh, new cities uh, and new teams that I'm on. I don't want to say you grew up in southeastern Wisconsin, but you had some formative years here and actually played in the state hockey tournament yeah. in Wisconsin as a ninth grader. Yeah, yeah, that was wild. Uh, thinking back on how long ago that was, almost 20 <laughs> years now. Um, Is that really? That's, it, it's almost, yeah, you're right? Yeah, yeah, 31 now, not getting any younger, that's for sure. So uh, I don't think I played more than, I think I maybe got like one or two shifts <laughs> when I was playing, yeah. I, I think I started on the JV team that year and uh, got called up to the varsity and, and we ended up going going all the way to the finals and losing but uh, good experience for sure something now that I'm playing back in Milwaukee can look back on and yeah so I, you know I think it's cool to, to play in a big stadium when you're that young and uh, you know see how many people really care about high school hockey in this area uh, it's pretty special you got the chance to play for Team USA last summer at the yeah. World Championships. What does that experience, what is it like? You go to Latvia, right? It was supposed to be in Latvia and Belarus and ended up just being in Latvia. Yeah. Yeah, that was a crazy experience. I think, uh, you know. And how did they pick you, by the way? Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly. It was yeah. kind of my agent who presented the offer to me and basically it was just like, do you want to go play in the World Championships? And, I had never worn the USA jersey before. I did, didn't do the USA tournaments growing up. Uh, didn't do, uh, obviously, a USA program. I didn't do any of the World Junior stuff, anything like that. So to be able to put that jersey on, uh, to me, it was a no-brainer, something I definitely couldn't turn down. It was a little awkward with COVID and everything. They had no fans, a ton of restrictions for us over there. We couldn't 
go to restaurants or bars or anything like that. So it, it wasn't the typical World Junior experience the, yeah, compared, the, yeah. compared to stories that I've heard from some of the other guys that have done it. But uh, to be able to put that jersey on and take a medal home is something I'll never forget. And that's just it. You come home with the bronze medal. I mean, that's, yeah. that's not bad. You're one for one when it yeah, comes to medal in yeah. the World Tournament. Yeah, we should have won the gold, but uh, that's uh, that's another story. We'll uh, we'll save that one. What we talked about moving around a lot when you were young. What are you you're wearing a Detroit Tigers hat? What yeah, you, is that what you consider home? Uh, well, I I have a Michigan? Tigers hat. Well, I went to college at Western Michigan. Yeah. I have a lake house uh, just north of Detroit, and a lot of my closest friends in that circle live in Michigan. So it just happens to be that I'm wearing a Tigers uh, hat today because I live there now. Yeah. Do you classify yourself away from the ice as a pretty quiet guy? Uh, laid back. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't maybe. say quiet. I would say uh, going back to that tight circle of friends, I, I definitely uh, don't open up to people that I am either not friends with or not close with. I, yeah. I think it's... Uh, it's like an onion. You got to peel back the layers a bit and I got to get to know you a little bit first before sure. uh, before you get the full story or the, or the full tenny. So uh, I think that's just kind of been my personality since I was a kid. Uh, just kind of go with the flow. All the places you've played, have you ever been on a Zamboni? Not for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Not for an interview, this is my first. It's pretty relaxing, isn't it? You can do this I, all day. I can think day. of a lot of things that are more relaxing than this, but uh, <laughs> but definitely the, the most interesting interview I've been on. Well, I appreciate that. that. I appreciate that. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no, of course. Anytime.